Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, my question pertains to shahawat. Um, yeah, my question pertains to shahawat. So the uh, you can explain the word like appetites. Appetites. Yeah. And how do we think, distinguish between like uh, where where do we pull a border between the appetites or the shahawat that are <coughs> dangerous for ourselves and the normal needs of the body mm -hmm. and the nafs? Okay. Um, <coughs> Well, this is a, a nice question. Jazakallah um, khair. The nafs is the locus of two qualities, anger and shahwa, anger and appetite. So in your nafs, you have the coming together of anger and appetite. That's the basic nafs. Of course, your nafs can, is many other things, but it begins basically as just that. Anger and appetite, those are its two most distinguished characteristics. And you know that anger is bad, right? Right? No. Anger is good. Anger is created good. Okay, and God created anger for what purpose? You know, to protect you from harm. So the purpose of anger is to give you a mechanism that enables you to stand up to evil and to stand up to harm and to be brave, you know, in dangerous and difficult situations. That's anger. So anger is, in, is an intuition that you have about madarra, about harm. And it responds with strength. I won't have this, I won't accept this, I'll stop it. Okay? So, you want to channel your anger and control it so that it's in the right place. That's what's important. And therefore, when we talk about appetite, the same thing pertains to anger. That uh, the anger that you have is a good thing. And we don't want to get rid of it, but we want to get it controlled. We want to get it controlled. And when anger is controlled, then it produces beauty. It produces courage, manliness or womanliness. It produces generosity. It produces neatness. You want to dress nicely. You're, you're concerned about the way you look. You don't want to just walk around in dirty old clothes, shabby old clothes. You want to look nice. That's anger. But that's anger in the right place, okay? Um, and shahwa, appetite, is good. It's created good. And what's its purpose? Jalb al-Masalih. Its purpose is to acquire the benefits that you need. So you need nourishment. And therefore, you have to be hungry. And you need water and liquids, therefore you need to be thirsty. <clears throat> and you need to preserve your body temperature. So you have a desire to put on warmer clothing when it's cold. And you have all these needs, right? And um, therefore appetite is always connected to that. And therefore also you don't want to destroy it. You don't want to destroy it. And, you know, when the appetite is in the right place, then it also produces in you balance, temperance, what we call in English, temperance, the ability to balance things out. And it puts in you also things like him, the desire to get things. I want to learn. You know, I want to be a really good Muslim. You know, I want to... Um, know my Lord. All of that's coming out of appetite. These are good things, you see. And so I want to get it, just like I'm hungry, you know, I'm going to get some food. I'll look for it, I'll find it. So um, the main thing about appetite is that, just like with anger, it has to be under control. 
and it has to also be directed to the right things. And, <clears throat> you know, anger is also associated with a hatred of pain. And uh, appetite is also associated with a love of pleasure. So when you're hungry and you have that delicious dinner like we had tonight, you take great pleasure in, you know, the beef and how well it was cooked, right? And the other dishes as well, right? You have pleasure. So appetite loves pleasure. And anger hates pain. Okay? Now, pleasure and pain motivate us a lot. But pleasure and pain in themselves are not rational. <clears throat> because, for example, I might have to take some bitter medicine and it's painful. You know, or I might have to, you know, you might have to take a shot, for example, a vaccination, and maybe it's painful, but there's good in it. So if we just go by pain, we won't do many things. You have to study to be a scholar or to be a teacher or to be whatever you're going to be. And that's painful. It would be so much nicer just to go to bed. It would be so much nicer just to go out to play, play football, right? But you're going to stay up and read those books? That's painful. So, um, you know, pain and pleasure <clears throat> have got to be controlled. They've got to be controlled. They have the purpose of making you want to get the things that are good and to avoid the things that are harmful. But they've got to be controlled. And <clears throat> so all of these things are that way. And of course, we know what is acceptable and not acceptable in these things by revelation. That there are certain things we shouldn't do, no matter how angry we get. There are certain things we shouldn't say, no matter how angry we get. And there's certain, you know, we shouldn't overeat. There is a hadith, for example, that Ibn Taymiyyah transmits <coughs> about a fat boy in Medina. Uh, I probably shouldn't have said it like that, but uh, an obese boy. He was very obese. He wasn't just fat. He was obese. And he ate a lot. And the Prophet indicated to him in this hadith, which is very interesting, and Ibn Taymiyyah has a lot of things like that, which are very interesting, and you may not find them elsewhere. <clears throat> and the Prophet basically told him that if, and his father, that if he does not begin to control his eating, and he dies, it will be suicide. <clears throat> he, will be <coughs> he will be held responsible for it. You know, so... We, we have to not overeat. And the Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to be moderate in all, in what we eat, what we drink, in the things that we do, not to go to excess. And this is also part of the purification of the self, is being able to control our appetite and being able to control our anger. Uh, one of the amazing things about Ramadan is that, you know, it, gives you the opportunity to cultivate these traits immensely. It's an, and it's an extremely beneficial type of worship, isn't it? <clears throat> and isn't it amazing that we're all happy when Ramadan comes? Even though you're not going to eat all day. Uh, you know, you're not going to sleep a lot of the night. You'll be praying. <clears throat> you know, you're not going to be drinking and it might be hot. And yet, when Ramadan comes, we're all happy, aren't we? We're all happy. The whole Ummah is happy. And that's because it's such a great act. And, you know, being able to control ourselves. And it gives us dignity. <clears throat>